Hello and welcome to the channel. This is day 21 of CCNA course. We are talking about OSPF, the first dynamic routing protocol that you need to know about. I have spoken to him very shortly about RIP and OSPF is going to be the actual protocol which is standard that is used in enterprises, data centers and different service providers networks. So uh, in previous video, I talked about uh, the overall OSPF configuration and what OSPF is, how you need to use this inside your network and what are the capabilities. In this video, what I'm going to do is to talk about uh, some details about OSPF. The first thing that you need to know is they send and receive hello packets to each other. What is a hello packet? So hello packet is a packet that we send your destination to your neighbor and that is going to be kind of saying I am here and I support OSPF. If you are there and you support OSPF, then we can kind of uh, become neighbors. And after that, you then become adjacent. If you remember, I talked to you about uh, neighborship and adjacency, and I told you that neighborship is kind of knowing each other. Adjacency is complete database exchange, which means that I know everything about you. You know everything about me, and we have the same database inside the network. That is what adjacency means. We said brothers send and receive packets to each other. The hello packets are sent using multicast. And if you remember, multicast is a specific type of a packet that is sent to multiple people. And those multiple people, of course, should be registered for this specific packet. Otherwise, they are not going to process it. If, for example, I am interested in receiving this specific thing, then I say explicitly that anything that comes to me on this specific address, I am interested in that and I want to receive it. So that's called multicast. And OSP and hello messages are sent using multicast because I don't really want to repeat it for every receiver. I want to send one and everyone who is interested can receive that and use it. Okay, so uh, that is the uh, IP address for uh, the multicast. This is 224.005. There is another one which we are going to talk about, which is 224.006. And that is used when we are selecting a designated router. And that designated router is going to use that IP address. And what is a designated router? We are going to talk about this in a minute. So uh, when we send hello packets to the others, we send some information inside that hello packets. For example, what is my IP address? Uh, and then what are the uh, variables for OSPF that I support? Such as, for example, what is the MTU that I support in my network? What is the, let's say, uh, area that I am connected to? And different types of OSPF stuff that you just put it inside that uh, OSPF packet. And the destination, of course, is going to receive it and it's going to check it if there is similarities between the hello message variables and its own variables, then they are going to move ahead and they are going to become neighbors. So parameters are checked for compatibility. Then database exchange is going to start. So after we um, agreed on some of the variables, then we are going to start sending some information. The first thing that we are going to send is a database description. A database description is an overall, let's say, um, kind of a, a, let's say, summary of what I have in my database. And there is a sequence number inside that for every LSA that I have. Then you're going to check it and then see if everything that I have matches everything that you have. If they don't, then you're going to send me something which is called a, label, uh, a link state request. A link state request is kind of a request to uh, receive everything that I have. This means that you say what I have is different from what you have. So please send me your own database. And then what I am going to send to you is a latest link state update an LSU. And with that LSU, you are going to update your database and our databases are going to be totally the same. And after that, we are going to become adjacent. What we say is we are in full state. Interesting. So, I said we are in full state. This means that we can have different types of states. What are those states? The first state is down. This means that I don't know anything about you. You don't know anything about me. So we are down. We don't care about anything. After that, we are going to start initiation. This means that you have sent me hellos. I sent you hellos. And then what I'm doing is I'm processing your hellos and seeing what is inside that. If there is uh, some way uh, we can just uh, kind of, you know, uh, become 
let's say neighbor and this of course is going to happen during two ways as, as well after that uh i'm going to check to see whether my database and your database are synced otherwise we are going to uh start exchanging that database so xsr is going to be the next one which means that exchange is started and then we are going to load everything that we have received into our database and also we are going to run a spanning tree uh, sorry uh shortest path first protocol uh, or shortest path first algorithm which means that we are going to see whether this is um, whether there is the best path for reaching to the destination and also uh, understanding the map of the networks and after that we are going to become full which means that we are going to become adjacent so different stages of uh, adjacencies are like this so full means we agree on the full topology database everything that we have talked about uh, is going to end up in you know uh, retrieving the database and become the same on both of these okay so what about the next thing we have different types of networks and two of the most important networks are going to be broadcast and point to point what is a broadcast network so what i'm going to say is say here's a switch here and this switch is connected to let's say three routers these three routers was a router one router 2 and router 3 they have uh, an interface in the shared subnet let's say for example the subnet is going to be 10 10 10 0 slash 24 so this is going to be 10 10 10 1 this is going to be 10 10 10 2 and this is going to be 10 10 10 3 so what we have here is three different routers that are in the same subnet so this means that we are kind of a multi-access segment in here right so multi-access segment means uh something like this a shared network is in here between multiple routers and these routers of course are going to be connected to different types of networks with uh the number of interfaces that they have whatever the number of the interfaces are so uh we have a shared network in here when we have shared network this means that everyone is going to talk to others so that they can uh retrieve their databases and become uh adjacent now say we have another routers in here another router in here so that's going to be a fourth router which is going to be router four in here this means that each one of these routers has to speak to three other routers now say there is another one in here each one of the routers is going to uh, have to uh talk to four other routers so that's going to increase the number of messages that they send to each other and also processing is going to be so high because we have so many routers here as so much information that we have to process all of them so what we need to do is to reduce the amount of process that we have so one of these routers is going to create something that we call the pseudo node what it means is a, a fake router inside it Oh, we don't care about that so let's say that one of these routers is going to become something that we call it designated router for that specific segment what i mean is router one could be designated router for this segment but could be not designated router for other segments that it's connected to but right now we are talking about this specific segment this shared segment that is here so router one can become a designated router for this and then the other routers could take some other rules Let's say for example router 4 could become backup designated router or bdr and the others of course are going to be dr dr other so that is what others uh role is going to be dr other for this as well and dr other for this uh as well so what we have here is going to be designated other what does it designated rather do designated rather says hey, everybody just talk to me and i'm just going to talk to everybody so I'm going to be the leader of the network. I'm going to be the moderator of the network. Instead of talking to each other, just talk to me. Send your database to me. And I'm going to distribute it to others. So there is just one source that everybody is going to start talking to. So instead of having so many uh, you know, conversations, everybody is going to have only one conversation with the designated router. This means that the designated router is going to be the moderator in here. Okay. Uh, this kind of a network is called a broadcast network right a broadcast network has a specific type of 
uh, let's say characteristics. One of the most important features in here is we send hello messages every 10 seconds and our dead timer is going to be 40 seconds. So hello every 10 seconds and dead timer is going to be 40 seconds. That's very important to understand. Okay, so let's go for the next slide. What is the election rule? How can one of the routers become designated router, the other one can become backup designated router, and the other routers could become, let's say, uh, DR others. So instead of drawing the switch, what I'm going to do is just draw something which I call it a shared network, and routers are connected to this. Router 1, let's say, connected to this. Router 2 is connected to this. Router 3 is connected to this. So normally, and I'm repeating, normally what is going to happen is these routers are going to talk to each other the one that has the highest priority is going to become uh the, the, the designated router and highest priority uh of course is a priority that you set on the interfacing here so interfaces could be set with a priority for ospf and based on that the designated router is going to be elected if we do not do anything about priority, what's going to happen? Uh, when we don't have any priority set, the priorities are going to be a, uh, a match to each other, right? So what we do is we are going to select a router ID. If router ID has been pinned down inside the configuration, then that is going to be a router ID. If we do not uh, configure a router ID, the router ID is going to be the highest IP address of a loopback interface inside our uh, configuration inside our router if there is no loopback then highest ip address of an interface but loopback interfaces are most likely there and that's going to be selected for that so based on that one of the routers that has highest uh, uh ip address for the loopback id is going to become the designated router so elections do not automatically rerun when a better router joins this means that if we have another router connecting to this network, let's say router 4, there is not going to be another check in here. Even if router 4's IP address has a, is higher or priority is higher. So what is going to happen? In reality, the first router that claims the role is going to become designated router for the rest of the, uh, let's say, uptime of the router so let's say that for example router one has uh the lowest priority or router one has become an ospf router and this is the first ospf router that has come up in this network uh, when this happens router one is going to claim the designated role and the others are going to you know just join and accept that router one is a designated router there is no preemption right but if router one for example goes on for some reason or the link goes on in here then another election is going to happen. Uh, most likely there is a backup designated router which is going to take over and this is going to become the designated router and during the election, the other router, another router is going to become backup designated router. So there is no preemption. This means that nobody could claim the role badge. But after some time, you're going to see that the router that has highest priority, of course, is going to become uh, the designated router. Okay. Something which is important to understand is designated router and backup designated router. These are for multi-access network. In a point-to-point -point network, we don't really need to, you know, calculate anything. What is a point-to-point -point network? So most likely, 90% uh, of the networks are going to connect routers to each other. And they're going to be something like this. So this is going to connect to this router. Let's say this is going to be connected to this router. And... Uh, very rarely, of course, you are going to see that this is going to be connected to this and something like that. So most likely we are going to have something like a ring in a topology specific in service providers. Inside our network, of course, it's not going to be a full mesh as well. So rather one, two, three, and four are here. So you can see that each one of the routers is connected to the other router with only one link. So this means that in this segment, there are only two routers. So when we have only two routers, we don't really need to elect anything like designated router because they always talk to each other. 
Electing a designated router is not going to make sense. So what we do is we change the network type to point to point. A point to point network uh, is uh, a network that has only two routers on that. So each one of the links that you can see can be a point to point in here. And no designated router or backup designated router is necessary for this. In this network, again, hello timer is going to be 10 seconds. Dead timer is going to be 40 seconds. The same as broadcast. And there is going to be simpler neighbor relationship in here because now we don't really need to check for a designated router inside our network. So that's going to be much more efficient and also less amount of information of course are going to be sent to each other because when we have designated router there is going to be an extra LSA which is LSA type 2. In point to point network we don't have LSA type 2. There is another type of network which you rarely see these days. That is called non-broadcast multi-access. Now this is multi-access, very much similar to broadcast network, but this is non-broadcast, which means that we do not support uh, multicast in this kind of a network. When we say mo broadcast, most likely we mean multicast in this kind of a network. Now I said that you do not really see this kind of a network. Uh, this is a uh, characteristics of some old type of network, which is let's say frame relay is one of them. Now in frame relay, of course, there were uh, th these were very low speed in in today's uh, of course uh, standards. They were very low speed uh, networks, and they didn't really support any kind of multi multicast on them. So when we wanted to connect uh, two routers to each other using OSPF and have adjacency, what we needed to do is we needed to send every hello messages using a unicast frame. A unicast frame. Uh, could be sent over this kind of a network to the other side. So we have multi-access, but no broadcast. Say this is my frame relay network. Uh, I don't care about what is happening inside this, but this is a frame relay network. This is connected to one router. On the other side, we have another router. On the other side, we have another router. And based on the configuration that we had inside this, we could have something that we called it pseudo wires. Uh, so, say there was a pseudo wire connecting this to this, there might be another pseudo wire connecting this to this, and maybe another pseudo wire connecting this to this. And this kind of pseudo wire connections were very expensive in those days. So, what I had is this kind of a network, but in this kind of a network, if I wanted to send a multicast to the other side, that was not supported, so I had to send unicast to the other side. And I had to configure this neighborship because normally uh, the other side would not really know anything about here. So that is most relevant for legacy and maybe exam scenarios, but I don't believe that you're going to uh, be tested against this kind of a network uh, during CCNA. So we talked about neighbor formation and step-by-step -step process. I spoke about designated router and backup designated router and I told you that this kind of a configuration is for multi access networks and also I told you that there is another type of network that 95% of the times you are going to see this in your production environment that is point to point it is cleaner it is simpler and that is connecting two different routers to each other and when we have adjacency uh, before the adjacency happens we need to have some uh, similar variables such as uh, matching timers, matching area, and matching network type. These are critical and of course there are some more but we are going to talk about them later. I hope this has been informative for you. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel and share this with your friends. Also drop your questions in the comments. I will try to answer your questions as soon as possible. Also uh, stay tuned hit that bell button so that you are going to get notified anytime that we share a video with you. See you in later videos.